Uh, my name is Jim Higgy, and I'm the chief of the inspection branch uh, from Atlanta. And uh, we have the inspection responsibility, my branch has the inspection responsibility for Honeywell. Jim Bridget, I'm the uh, plant manager of Metropolis Works. Mark Wolf, I'm the nuclear compliance director at the Honeywell Metropolis Plant. Yes, Mr. Higgy, so my name is Howard Duck. I spoke to you in the past about the plant. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you sent me a letter back stating that uh, the drums have been processed and that, uh, according to the analysis, that uh, there wasn't any accounting in it. Correct. And All the letters. This week I got word that, that they were actually processing those drugs as we speak. So, you know, I'm texting them when they tell me something to be improved. And I don't know why anybody would lie about it, but you know, someone has lied to you or to, to me about those drugs. Somebody lies, that tells me that they have something to hide. And these, these drums, when I was working out there, they just put to the side because we were told because they were too high to die. And you came back and said they were put there because they were hard and, and wet, which I'm sure they are now being in the KOH. I just want to let you know that, that uh, if that's the case, I didn't lie to I know I didn't lie to you, but you may have been lying to me. Now, one other issue, we was talking about the rail cars. And he said they had seismic valves on the rail cars and shut those off. And I just want to ask, is those valves, do they close the valve on the rail car, or is it air operated valves that's connected to the rail car? Tell you what, the, the, the question is to me, and, uh, and, and I don't have that, you know, that specific level of, uh, of uh, knowledge of, uh, of every valve. What I will commit to you is to give you contact information, I'll get the uh, questions answered to you. And we'll take a little more information from you with regard to the raw material. Um, I think it has been um, investigated. And, and we, we looked at it, and that material that was processed years ago. And, uh, but we would, uh, the, but you're asserting that there is still some of that material out there at the facility right now. Uh, we'll, we'll take that, we'll take that concern seriously, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll investigate and we'll get back to you. Uh, we'll need you to, to stay a little later after the, uh, after the, uh, the meeting's over, so we can get your contact information. That's okay. Any other questions? Frankie, yeah. yeah. Uh, I might as well go ahead and ask. <coughs> Gary Vanderbilt, and I appreciate the letter that you uh, sent out uh, to uh, Mr. Cook from Commonwealth Environmental Services. And I, I believe you were here over a year ago where we explained the sick worker program and Honeywell. I've worked with some of the Honeywell people on the merits of that program for various employees. What's key here tonight uh, for our uh, community here in the province is that. The sick worker program requires, uh, only allows people that process material for DOE to be covered under Part E. And I want to thank you all at NRC for giving us the opportunity to address this over a year ago. And now uh, with the NRC letter and the uh, drum listing that we had from other employees that brought forward, we've shared that with Senator Durbin's office and uh, uh, a young man from uh, the other congressman's office here. Congressman. Got uh, Congressman Shimkus, and 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 I'm just directing the question, but I know we've got people here at Honeywell can refute anything that we're talking about. But I would prefer that we all realize that the Honeywell workers deserve the Part E, and we we published that about five years ago. We've had Billy here for various uh, uh, various public meetings, and this is really about did you all ever perform work on behalf of DOE under contract? Now, the best way to approach that, and I appreciate NRC's involvement, 
is look at the contracts that you use. We've got the drums. You didn't, is there anybody in this room who thinks that you all did work for free? And I don't think you would want to, anybody would want to deny that, but we've got your admission that you did take the Fernald drums and you just finished that drum processing on January 31st, 2014, according to Mr. Hickey. So we just want to then let you all know that we're going to get all of your employees Part E coverage, Senator Durbin, with the help of Congressman Shimkus, and that's what we're here for. And anything else right now is just about you are performing work for DOE. You're not just an AWE facility. You're a DOE facility as of about two weeks ago. Okay? That's good. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. 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 Thank you
And B, each worker's representative shall be routinely engaged in NRC licensed and regulated activities under control of the licensee or regulated entity and shall have received instructions as specified in 19.12. This is the same trend we've seen in 2011 when 17 violations were found. And I would just like to know why Honeywell refused the union's elected representative to walk around during the inspection. Yeah, you, you, you correctly uh, stated the, uh, the regulations there. The, the, the key element there, which is in the second subpart, is that the individual has to be routinely engaged in licensed activities. And the particular individual that was originally selected was no longer an employee of, uh, of Honeywell, therefore was not routinely engaged in licensed activities. There's a couple of subsections later that talks about if Honeywell agrees and the union's uh, representative, or the employee's representative agrees, that individual could be allowed to uh, accompany. In this case, Honeywell did not agree to allow that particular individual access. Now, I will say that another individual was selected and, uh, and accompanied the inspector during those inspections. So, uh, so an individual uh, identified by the, uh, by the employee's uh, employee representative was present for those inspections. Uh, it seems like the same same thing we've seen in 2011, quite a bit. I can only speak to uh, to what uh, what occurred in, in the fall, but uh, but we complied with the regulations. the uh, The basis for the individual being routinely engaged in NRC regulated activities is one of safety, because uh, the NRC inspector cannot take responsibility for someone else accompanying them in the inspection. You know, there are, it is a, an industrial environment, so there, there are hazards that, uh, that individuals that, uh, that work there are trained on uh, annually. They get refresher training, and, uh, and you have to understand what those hazards are to be able to, uh, to walk on a sport of the city. Any other questions? Uh, my name is Steve Cheney, and I uh, had some questions I wanted to ask you. Um, my organization uh, received some photographs of some barrels that are on the Honeywell property. The west side of the plant, as you're facing the plant. Okay. There are numerous barrels that are stacked there, various types of barrels that are, st that are stacked there, and your investigations and inspections of the plant. Can you tell us a little bit about what is in those barrels yep, the, that the, are stacked? The, Absolutely. Can, can take a look? Okay, what, uh, what we've got here are a series of, they look like 48X cylinders. They're not really barrels. These are, these are pressure cylinders that, uh, that contain uh, UF6, uh, it's, it's what uh, is what you load the uh, load the material into. The barrels that are the, the cylinders that, uh, that that you that you show on the picture right there are all empty. So there's no material in, in any of those cylinders. Okay. And would that also be the case for these metal cylinders that are stacked up that are standing up? Now those are 55 gallon drums. And those uh, contain uh, what's called yellow cake, which is the, the, the concentrated, naturally occurring uranium. That, uh, that's the first step in the process. So each one of those 55-gallon uh, drums uh, is, uh, contains that material. So that's the, the first step in the process for conversion. Okay, so what is the radiation level of those particular barrels? It would be minimal. Uh, as, as we were talking a little bit with uh, the previous question, that uh, uranium is primarily an alpha decay uh, hazard. An alpha particle only travels a couple of inches in air. They're inside metal uh, uh, metal cylinders, so there there is there is virtually uh, nothing measurable at the uh, at the at the uh, where the where the barrels are. The uranium itself is is not an external hazard. It's an internal hazard, the, the alpha particle, 
It's highly charged. So if you uh, if you inhale it or ingest it, that's where the the, the primary uh, the primary hazard is. The primary danger of this yellow cake inside these would be in a form of, in, of ingesting it, breathing it in. Mm -hmm. What would happen in a situation, let's say we had a tornado, I mean we live here in Tornado Alley, a tornado were to come through and lift those barrels up and who knows where they could land here in Metropolis possibly busting open and exposing the community to this agent that you're talking about. And why would we not come up with some kind of protective measure for those barrels like an enclosure or a cage as the upgrades have been done inside the plant? The facility is licensed to, to store that material and they are storing the material in accordance with the license. When you talk about events and consequences, there, there, there are two things that, uh, that, that we consider. The, the, the potential uh, initiating event frequency and the potential consequences. When you put those two together, you come up with overall risk. So given the, the unlikely nature or the unlikely uh, probability of occurrence of, uh, of a tornado going exactly through that area and the, and the potential consequence of, of the material being spread around, it would be something that would need to be cleaned up. But, uh, but, but overall, they are, they're in compliance with their license as it's, uh, as it's written right now. The storage uh, mechanism out in the open like that in the 55-gallon drums that are in good physical condition is, uh, is allowed by their license. So their license doesn't require them to be inside some kind of enclosure? That is correct. It does not require any additional protective uh, enclosure for, for, those, uh, for those drums. And this, uh, this, uh, this is a, a, a good point to talk about what, what we can do. What, what can the NRC do? In order for us to be predictable in the way that we regulate, we have to follow the same rules that or enforce the rules that, that we impose upon, upon the licensee. If there's, uh, so we, we look at the license that we issued some time ago and, and we compare what, the, what it is that they're doing with the requirements of the license. Now if, if, uh, if there is a, a uh, if we identify something or uh, someone out there identifies something that uh, thinks needs to be changed, then there's a mechanism to propose additional rulemaking. And it's a, uh, so that, that, that's an opportunity for anyone in the public who thinks something needs to be changed. We can, uh, you, know, you, can you can propose to, to the NRC that, a, that another rule be, be made to address a, a particular area of concern. And then we'll evaluate it and see if, uh, if a new rule is warranted. And can you share with the public on how they could, in, how they could implement something like that? I'll, uh, uh, if I can get your contact information, then uh, I'll, I'll send you an email with the, with the, the guidance document for, for proposing it. Absolutely. You know, one more. Let me come up with that. You can get me on film here. We want to document this. Uh, I'm reading from your letter. It's the allegation report. R, what is that? Is that uh, two L's or? That's region two. Region 2, R22-2013A0158, two, two and, and I'm just reading what uh, Honeywell's response was, was to you all, and, and again, I, I just have to commend you all for following up and finding out the Fernald drums were being processed at the plant, and let me read that. Uh, Honeywell provided a copy of the letter from Allied Signal, the owner of the facility at the time, uh, to NRC dated July 1798, the document the results of laboratory analysis which we requested by Freedom of Information Act, uh, processed in the green salt. Uh, it looks like it's uh, documented the results of samples of green salt received from Bernal DOE. Uh, those are called firm code drums, so when you see those stamped on the drums, that's where they're from. Jane Powell is the site manager of DOE firm uh, at Fernal, good friend of mine. Uh, and, and going down to the next paragraph, uh, NRC responded to Allied Signal and it looks like uh, Honeywell indicated as of January 31st, 2014, there was no longer any green salt from Fernal located at the facility and that it had been consumed without any unexpected operational illnesses. Was that, you're, you meant that to be at January 31st, they consumed that? No. no the, uh, oh, okay, but you do have analytical data that no. show. 
that that the what that sentence is telling us is that uh, Honeywell went out, looked for these drums, and as of that date, they could not find it. It's not a. Have you met with the workers to come to that conclusion? Or you won't? I guess this meeting, they can't make the statement. There is no uh, allied chemical processing of firm code drums going on right now? That, uh, that is my understanding. And, and so there's nobody can say that there is in the audience or not? Is that an NRC hearing rule? The, right, right now, the, the meeting is between the, the public and myself. Well, that's kind of unfair, but uh, Jim, you know, that, understand. That's, that's a we, it's almost like, you know, these, these people deserve to hear this. I, but but they're appreciate not. The, appreciate okay. the comment. But but would you be surprised the Department of Justice has been provided that information to the contrary? Y'all are both federal agencies, so you can communicate, right? And I've sent some of that to you all. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you.